So we're gonna it's it's a mystery. We're gonna find out. Maybe he was eaten by uh, Barbie Prime's dog. I do not know. Uh, creator here currently one in three in Pro League. His only win being a cannon rush. Uh, yeah. that he was able to execute against Youngwa, I believe it was. Yeah. His other two games, one was a two gate versus Biel that got scouted. The other one was versus Kane in a really really cool PVT. Um, he is going to be up against Roro though, a Zerg player who, as you guys see his record right there, pretty pretty good, especially in Pro League 2014 2-0 so far against Protoss team. Uh, his fan favorite, uh, according to the crowd here in the studio, 135 versus 114, as you mentioned, 2 0 this season. This guy, can he be beaten by Creator? Yes, but will he be beaten today? Well, Creator is stressed out, his team is down. He's 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 not only down in this particular match, but his team is at negative seven, now negative eight, if you count uh, the loss they've taken already today. And the terrible, terrible position to be in. If Creator could keep his wits about him, maybe. Just maybe he could take this win, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to be nearly impossible. Let's jump into Creator versus Roro. That's your vestige. And that says they lost a uh, connection to the game. Oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> All right, it looks like uh, it looks like the, the show will go on. It's just that Brendan's screen isn't going to be able yeah, to watch it, our, maybe. Our preview monitor is not getting a, a look at the game. It might have froze or something. Regardless, down there in the bottom right was Creator, and of course up here in the top left is Roro, Samsung Khan. Come come over close and watch with me, Brendan. We'll, we'll watch this game we really close together. We can scoot in together and, and uh, take a seat by the hearth. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what we can do. Oh, we see that Creator is taking a more safe approach. That's Creator's, uh, Creator's motto. And he drops that pylon down there. We and got some Hanja in there. I can't read Hanja. Some of those Chinese letters are having some trouble. LOL was mentioned there. Yeah. Well, I'm no Hanja expert. You're studying it right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping to study it one day, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm on the beyond for... Learning Hanja. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, anyways, as I said, Creator likes to play safe. We'll probably see him go for uh, a Nexus into Forge. Maybe even Forge into Nexus because he's that safe and he's already scouted in here. He's going to force the pool first out of his opponent with that super fast pylon scout. And yeah, as you can see, his probe has rallied over to put that Forge down. No block there by the drone. The drone might stick around for a little bit at the Nexus, on the other hand. Something that is going to be a little bit annoying for Creator. But Creator is doing the same, of course, to his opponent up here at the top. Roro has to go pool first. He can't try to hatchery first against a probe. He's going to get delayed. Yeah, so both players kind of delaying themselves here. This this drone kind of turning the tides against Protoss. This used to happen all the time in the beginning of uh, Wings of Liberty, where we'd have so many different hatchery blocks. Zergs always wanted to go hatch first, as they do now. Um, One more shot will kill that drone. Yeah, the drone's got to be careful. You'll see Creator do the same thing, though. He'll stick around until the last shot, and then he will leave one more peck, and then he has to get away. Whoa! Oh! oh. That was close. Um, but these are pro gamers. These are professionals. Best level players in the world. And uh, they don't make those mistakes. They get away. I like how Observer highlighted both uh, blocking workers <laughs> on there for a second. Yeah. You can see how he has all his shields regenerated, but no health. This drone over here is just checking to make sure nothing sneaky is going on, especially with that forge first. Gateway is going to go down now as well. Yep, nice little wall here set up for, for Creator. You can go ahead and put that uh, Cybernex core down to uh, make the uh, full wall. And uh, I'm curious to see what Creator is going to do because in in recent days he's been very he's been very aggressive. He's been trying to shake up his nature, you know, and, and try to to reach into that all-in nature of many of his past teammates, like uh, Hongen and any pro. He's, he's reaching back to the past. He's calling up any pro and saying, listen, can you give me a build? Hongen's bit by bit. <laughs> Hong, yeah, bit by bit. Hongen's sitting at home. Hongen's, like, much much uh, long retired. He's, he's reading that same book that he brought to the Code S uh, group selection. He's still reading the same book. And Creator calls him up and he says, hello. Can you make a strategy? Listen, I want you to study. I'll pay you. I want you to study Roro's games. I want you to make the perfect all-in 
or Belsh your vestige. I need you to teach me, Hongan. Hongan puts the book down in size and, <laughs> and loads some Twitch VODs. He's like, oh, I'm on the case. I gotta call any pro. We gotta work together on this. <laughs> Creator doing a nice job keeping that probe up in the top right to check to see if that third was going down. He did successfully see that it is going down, so he's going to respond in the correct way. Yep. The uh, Zergling over here just, he's got his back turned to the forge, but he's, he's listening. He's making sure that the forge isn't rotating. Doesn't want to see any fast plus one aggressive timings. Well, he wants to see it if it's coming. He wouldn't like to see it, but if he does see it, he will definitely notify Roro. Same to be said of this Stargate that's now going down for Crater, which is placed in such a position that the Overlords will have to go in and verify. And that's nothing we've seen too crazy on this map. A lot of Stargate play out of Protosses against Zerg. Um, you know, very safe. Get those Phoenixes out, possibly an Oracle for some harass. See what they can do. Zergling just uh, chasing that probe. Probe does go home safely. And now we're just seeing the, the gas up here for Roro. He's going to transition here into the mid game quite nicely. And with the Overlords that he has, he will lose those. Uh... Looks like Creator's going to go Void Ray here, which means he will take that very safe Belshir third. A lot of uh, players arguing it's almost too safe to take. Sends the Stalker out, which actually leaves temporarily an opening here. Uh, looks like he wants to control the Watchtower. And here comes that Overlord coming in right at the, the timing you would want to come in to, to check for Robo. Or if you're just going to verify, of course, it's the Stargate going up again. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look like he's seen the Stargate just yet, but as this Void Ray comes out and starts to clear out those Overlords, he's going to know exactly what this is and the spores that he starts the three one at each base is gonna put him in a safe spot against dt's as well so even if stargate doesn't come the spore car is gonna be useful um even in the late game if there are dt's so keep that in mind the void ray gonna clean up any zerlings around the third base and he wants to check to see if there are any zerlings nearby Look at this! Plasma Shield's upgrade going down, so we're going to see a really big uh, commitment to air from Crater. We've seen him do this in Codes right after Heart of the Swarm came out. He was doing this, he was playing that uh, old style we saw from Deer, and uh-oh, this Sentry. Yeah, we saw Roro make a bunch of Zerglings. The speed is not done yet, so these Zerglings are going to pretty much do it so far. He did get a bunch of those Zerglings out as he saw the Stargate tech come out, and possibly wanted to try to do something at the third, but with those Zerglings getting caught, going to have to back off for now. Continuing with a bunch about 14 now, but also getting a ton of drones. Yeah, he wants to drone up after he forces a cancel on his third base, and he's hoping that he can get over here and do this. That's why Creator was out with those units. He wants to trade as many Zerlings as he can before Zerling speed is done, and then once the Zerling numbers are dwindled down a little bit, he can actually deal with them. And there's no way he's going to force a cancel with this small number of Zerlings. The speed does finish, though. The question is, is there something at the wall? There needs to be, and there's not. Here we go. Runs right into the man. A slight mistake here by Creator, but he's going to go for the surround instead. Could actually try to recall to save these units, but he doesn't. The Void Ray coming over a little bit slow. He needs that wall tight, and it is so far. He's able to take out all those units, and now he's going to come over to here to the third. And besides those Void Rays, he doesn't have much. He's going to try to warp in and try to stop this with the Void Rays and the one Mothership Core. Looks like he's going to be able to. These Zerglings are going to have to get out of here. Yeah, it's, it was too far along. The cannon finishing there as well. And if the Nexus finishes, of course, he can use the Overcharge ability with that Mothership Core to drive the units away. A good trade for Roro against the sentries. The question is, what happens next with these 39 Zerlings that are on the map? Can he actually get something done with them? I don't think he can. Not with this many Void Rays out and also the the next round of Warp Ends plus the, the Overcharge. I think he control, can control the map and uh, solidify that fourth and fifth base. He's double expanding right now. But doing damage at this third is going to be virtually impossible, as you can see here. Yeah, he's just coming in here trying to poke, see what he can see. Uh, but he knows, like you said, he has a ton of time here to just macro up, and getting that double expand up is a really nice job by him. We see three Stargates at a creator right now. He's going triple Void Ray. Respect well the as, Void Rays. Yes, you got to respect those. He he saw that Sora game against uh, Squirtle, and he's saying, well, maybe I can work, make this work again, once again against the Zerg. Let's I mean, see we've I seen him do this strat. a lot uh, yep. in, you know, in Heart of the Swarm. This is one of the things he was doing versus Zerg. This is one of the things many pros were doing versus Zerg. He goes for the armor upgrade. Now that he has the plus one, knowing that he can get full upgrades on his air without making a fleet beacon, which costs a lot for him right now. And uh, what is, what's the answer to Void Rays? Well, it's Infestors. He needs to be able to get Chain Fungals on the Void Rays, and also he's going to have Queens for support. 
creator yeah. could try to like use these Vordries to snipe a hatchery, but that's a little bit risky. That's definitely something he could consider though. Starting that pathogen glands upgrade right now. Gonna get those investors out. He knows the answer to this, Roro does, and he's doing it really well so far. Yeah, any sport quality. Response. Yeah, any sport quality he has helps out a little bit. Uh, again, we'll get vision for later on. Wow, he gets to see everything you want to see. Well, okay, you're still making void rays. That's pretty scary. Yeah, and here comes a little bit of a run by. Creator does have that tight wall on the other hand. Not going to be able to get inside where early as that is. They are. These queens out on the map spreading that creep very, very nicely. He's going to want that so that he can connect his bases really well. Get all his units really nice and mobile all over the map so he can uh, respond to this air army of creator. Yeah, Roro won his uh, his last Zerg versus Protoss in similar fashion by just playing defensively against a heavy Void Ray style. It wasn't this quick. It wasn't this many Void Rays that fast. This is exactly what I was talking about. Creator's like, why well, you got all that Void Rays? I can kill this Nexus in like less than less than five seconds if I'm targeting it. Rather the, the Hatchery, not the Nexus. He can just ignore that Spore Crawler. Investors come out here at the worst possible moment uh, as far as their survivability goes, but look at that. Boom. Recalls. Yep. Doesn't even matter. Able to recall this fourth is going to be canceled on the other hand. But look at this. Huge army of warriors as well at the third. These are things are going to be chased away. But they are going to attack at the front. He has to be careful. Choosing to run away is Roro. Just so many Zerlings for Roro. He knows that it's it's an efficient way, mineral-wise, to control the map and to always force Crater back. He knows that his Zerlings will never kill a hatchery. They're never going to get into the main base and kill a bunch of probes. But if Creator doesn't turn around, maybe they can. So he's forcing Creator to turn around repeatedly, keeping him off of his expansions that are so vulnerable to those Void Ray uh, prismatic alignments. And the Fleet Beacon comes out here. He's going to be able to get more upgrades. He's going to be able to add some Tempest. So many Queens here, 12 in total. And 93 drones, a lot of those are about to become Sport Crawlers. Uh, Ultralisk Cavern is up. I don't think that's going to be what he wants here, though. At least not until he eliminates 19 Void Rays. <laughs> yeah, that's 19 and counting right now. Continuing three at a time is Creator. Continuing to spread that creep. Look at how many Queens he has there, as well as Infestors coming out. He needs to be able to get some Chain Funnels. Vipers wouldn't be a bad idea, but with this many Void Rays, if you grab one or two of them uh, and lose a lot of gas in the process, it's not good. He needs actually a Warp in here. He's going to need something. He's going to need a lot more than this. This is not enough. Those the, the wall is starting to crumble. The Cyber Nice Core may fall. Oh, he doesn't commit. That's a scary thing to deal with, though, for Creator. He's got to come back and defend that. Look at these queens coming over, trying to do some aggression at the fort. The Creator going to be pushed back. they got to get back on that creep. He's trying to bait these units into fungal range, uh, but Creator's not falling for it. Creator is in a solid position in this game with four bases up, even in supply. These are the fungals that he needs. He needs to get, if he can, a little bit more of them, though. And that was a bit sloppy by Creator. Could have targeted down some of those Infestors. He's always keeping two Voidrays at the front because two Voidrays can make such quick work of Infestors if they target with that uh, Prismatic alignment. There goes the core. No more air upgrades and no more Warpens to stop the sentries. And a bunch of Zerglings in your base <laughs> all up in your probes and stuff. Here he comes targeting down that cannon. He's going to get to work on those probes right away. Could even target down that Fleet Beacon in there. Yeah. He can't warp in units to defend because he doesn't have supply. Of course, now he does that. He's lost a few of his probes, but at the initial moment, he didn't have enough supply to warp in. And at the same time, Roro bringing this Queen Infestor force over here. But with he all of these uh, Voiders over there, it could be hard to deal with. He's got to get some really nice fungals. He could actually, with no Colossi here, drop a bunch of Infested Terrans, to be honest. That might help him out a little bit. Ultra is leading the charge here. Here comes the Prismatic Alignment. Respect the Void Race, says Creator, but a good fungal by Roro will slow the chase. And now he's actually used that Prismatic Alignment. Nothing else to do here. He can't fight these Queens and the, and the Investors together without Prismatic Alignment. More Ultralisks being used to remax. Yeah, these Ultras now going back to the front. There's still not a tight wall here. He's going to get down that Cybernetics Core again, even yeah. though it's not quite upgrading something right now. These Raiders are going to try to come in here and fight this with the one Colossi. This, the Zealots as well coming from the side. Yeah, and more Void Rays coming in as well. They're starting to fan out pretty nicely here for Creator. Queen's going down. He needs to transfuse those two go down. And some more of these four Crawlers will actually be forced to cancel. And if he's not quick, uh, they may actually take them out. But Ultralists are just ignoring this. What I really like about Roar, and this is what I said about him earlier, about his multitasking, about his ability to use run bias, to use Zerlings on the map. In, in this case, in the late game, Ultralists all over the map is 
He's keeping some of these units back. He's basically making the creator make a choice. Are you really going to commit to running into my score calls and trying to chase down my army? Because if you do, I'm going to kill all your probes at home and start messing with your infrastructure. Here come the chain fungals. Not looking good for creator. One more goes down. All these Void Rage stuck under here. We have them targeted at Fire Reserver. A ton of them going down. He's got to get another fungal. Does get it. One more would be nice as well. And he needs to just make sure he keeps those investors alive. If he loses queens for these votaries, that's a great trade. Those that creator has dropped down to 131 supply. He doesn't have the economy, he doesn't have the production to continue to make these void rays to, to remax with those. I think he probably lost eight or, or so void rays in that engagement. And if you lose that many, that's not something you can replace. A Zerg player, especially a Zerg player who has this much larva, this many bases, can replace his units oh so quickly. Even if he trades Ultralis like this, he might even get these Colossi. He's trading for Colossi, and right now that's that's so good for him. Like you said, it's so easy to remax. And he's just continuing to make... He was making eight Ultralis and a bunch of Zerglings. He can just continue running at the front. He's dropping Infested Terrans over here at the fourth. He's not able to mine Creator is. Yeah, this is uh, this is what something I'd really like to see more of for Zerg players, is dropping those Infested Terrans in the Mineral Line. Especially when there's not any Colossi nearby, because probes and, uh, you know, stalkers even, whatever units you have nearby are not going to be good enough for that. You can kill with Void Rays, but not when your Void Rays are busy dealing with Ultralis, which keep going for the run by. It's going to catch an, ult or an Immortal for free, and this this lack of a tight wall is becoming a very big problem for Creator, who will now lose his natural, yeah. and perhaps even his main Nexus. He's not even he's not even putting the Ultras in there. He's just focusing on all the next side with the Zerglings, forcing the army to come over there to the, the natural and sending a bunch into the main. The Zerglings also at the fourth. Creator's economy is being just put into shambles right now. Yeah. This is, uh, this is still a strong army for Creator. It's just that it's going to be the, the last army that he has. He's never going to be able to, to make another one if he loses it. So he has to basically re-secure his bases, which is even... It, it, that thought in itself is expensive for him with less than 400 minerals. Or, and or, go across the map to attack Aurora, who's upgrading double upgrades at Spires, who has probably 25 or so spore crawlers on the map, which are going to delay everything. This base will go down, but it's just a baby step for Creator right now. Yeah, I mean, him going over there and taking out the base is good, but now you're going to have a huge Zerg army over here. He has enough army over here to at least ward off any attack, but he's going to get that Nexus down. That's all he wants for now. It's just, it's just basically saying, your Void Rays can kill my Ultras pretty fast, and my Ultras can... I have so much money, my Ultras, I'm fine to trade with those. Zerglings are going to do way too much damage, and he's going to lose a lot of his Void Rays here again. And all he has to do is run back with the Ultras, save what he can, transfuse some of those, and he can rematch whatever he wants. And in this case, choosing Mutalis, especially with the double upgrades he just got, the Spires, is a pretty smart choice. Yeah, he's going to be getting those 1-1 one, one Mutas. And at the same time, sending Zerglings again to the front. He's going to target down a bunch of those production buildings. Could go even for the Stargate. Make it even harder for Creator to get those Void Rays out. Listen, Creator is not respecting his own Void Rays. He needs to be splitting those. If you have any respect for your Void Rays, if you have any love in your heart for them, when you know your opponent has that many infested out, you got to spread them, you got to split them. The way he moves those Void Rays across this creep makes me terrified. What if a Burrowed Infestor pops up and, and hits all those? You might lose the whole game over it. Uh, if he's got good vision here. He also has an Observer with his army, so the likelihood of that is, is quite small. But when he does engage, when he does fight that army, when he meets that army, he is going to want to fan these Void Rays out like crazy. Uh, just like we saw in the Protoss versus Protoss yesterday. And uh, goodbye Tempest. Those are not where they want to be. He actually saves them just because the Mutalists respect the Void Rays. They get away. Yeah, they get away. But at the same time as this big push is coming out of Creator, the whole base of Creator is being taken out by a bunch of these ground units of Roro. Basically, it's just the army left for Creator. Once Roro is able to take that out, it's game over. And here are those fungals I was talking about. Only gets a few, though. Split there at the last second for Creator. The second fungal goes down. Creator putting more of those Void Rays into fungal range. Yeah, he's got to be very careful about this. He needs to make sure that he spreads like he does. He doesn't have any answer for the, the army at home. What is he going to do? He's not going to be able to eliminate the Zerg player before he can eliminate him. He doesn't even have any probes that he saved. No. I don't he, even think he has a single probe on the map. Bro doesn't even have to fight. He can even send those Mutalists across the map to kill the buildings faster. He's got a Dark Shrine on the way with no gateways to produce DTs with. I don't think he has a single probe. He's being revealed. And he has a Dark Shrine, a Stargate, three Assimilators, and two Pylons. And there's not going to be anything else. Yeah, there's that lone Colossi, <laughs> so lonely, <laughs> sitting alone GG. in the field. GG. Creator had a, a decent spot in this game, a very nice fourth base. Aurora did exactly everything you want to do against this type of composition. Make infestors, be patient, 
and, and just creep across the map, make a lot of queens. And if you have that many Zerglings, and you're always able to keep Crater off of your bases and, and continue to eliminate structures in the main, start to, to mess with the economy. Because Void Rays can kill Zerglings in small number, but in, we're talking about oh, nearly 100 or over 100 Zerglings on the map at once. The, the Zerglings will kill a Nexus faster than the Void Rays can kill them. Void Rays don't do bonus damage to light. Yeah. The Lings just run away. Even from the start, when he saw that third base coming up, when he saw the Void Rays come out, he was like, okay, I can produce a lot of Zerglings and try to focus down this third and try to cancel and get ahead from there. But starting from then, he continued to build a, a big uh, Zergling force to just, you know, be on the ground and just continuously harass Crater's base all over the place. And he just couldn't deal with it with all those Void Rays. Well, Cassia now has to play against Stork. And if he loses, then a Prime is... Prime is getting all killed. Uh, they will drop to a negative 10 indicator. And that was a, a really nice game by Creator, but a better game by Royal. He takes his third win against Protoss in the late game. What he's known for, you know, what the, the Korean commentators are talking about, what, you know, the uh, the Spo TV writers are even putting up on screen, just saying, like, he's good in the late game against Protoss. Don't mess with him there. Creator got an early.